All right, guys, so I got a little code reader here that we're going to uh, take a look at. This is the uh, YA200. And I have not even taken this out of the box yet and took a look at it. So we're going to do that right now. Uh, just a little bit about it. It does support all 10 modes of OBD2 uh, test. Uh, of course, 96 and newer cars. It's got uh, a customizable and uh, a graph uh, of live data, a graph battery voltage test, multi languages, built in DTC lookup, and a 2.4 inch TFT color screen. It is updatable, comes with a uh, USB cable, and there's the back of the unit. There's the port for the OBD cable. There's the front. It looks like a solid unit. Feels it feels solid. Uh, got about a two and a half foot cord. So I'm gonna plug it in. And just so you know, I mean, what these are basically for. Of course, this is a code reader, so you can check it whenever you get a check engine light. You can check and see what is bringing your check engine light on. You can reset the check engine light, and the good thing about it is, that I, I, I honestly believe everybody should have a, a little code reader similar to this in their glove box, because if you're out on the road and your check engine light comes on, you need to know, is it something serious to where you shouldn't be driving the car, uh, or you know, is it more of a nuisance to where you can still drive it and it's not going to hurt anything, and this will tell you that. Um... Not to mention, if you want to just reset the light, uh, you don't have to worry about taking it to an auto parts store, have them plug their tool in, because uh, a lot of them nowadays won't reset it. They, their policy is, they'll tell you what the code is, but it's against their policy to reset the check engine light, for whatever reason. I've, I've heard more and more of, from people uh, saying that they wouldn't, like AutoZone and O'Reilly's and, and Advanced Auto, they won't reset the light. I'm sure some still do, but apparently some of them are not. So let's plug this thing in and see what it'll uh, do here. So it's just plugged in. And the cord, hold on, I'm going to have to adjust this camera. Cord just barely reaches where I've got the camera pointed. So, you know, it looks easy enough to navigate. So, let's take a look at this. We've got diagnosis, DTC lookup, battery, and settings. Well, the first thing I'd like to do is just go to settings. Okay, we've got language, units. System info, self test. Let's just go back. Let's see what battery does. Okay, so right now it's at 11.9 volts, it looks like. Go all the way up to 24 volts. Start the vehicle up. You saw that dip in battery voltage as it went down. You're seeing it climb back up. Got a timer down on the bottom. Of course, you got your minimum voltage 10.1 is what it dropped down to whenever I cranked it. And right now it's at 14.7, which is alternator voltage more specifically than battery so that's kind of cool you know if you're suspecting an alternator or a battery issue you can use this to uh, do a quick little test let's look up a DTC we'll see if it'll uh, accurately identify we got generic oh, look at that you can actually you can actually get specific let's just pick a Dodge 
there's there's P we'll do a uh, We'll do a 340. So maybe Dodge does not have a P340 as a uh, code. 340, I think, is a cam uh, uh, sensor. So let's just go into generic and we'll hit it. Okay, camshaft position sensor, A circuit, bank one, or single sensor. So we've got possible causes. The trouble code will appear if ECU can't detect uh, air intake left front camshaft position sensor signal in the set time period. Well, that's kind of neat. I don't know why it's got a uh, got anything to do there with the uh, air intake. Yeah, I don't know why it's talking about air intake, but anyway, it did accurately say that the uh, that it is a camshaft sensor. So let's hit diagnosis. Going through the protocols there, we got a mill status is is off. Uh, there are no codes. Monitors are we got eight that are okay. We got zero that are incomplete, and we've got three that are NA. Ignition type is spark. So let's see what we got here. Let's get back to that. Okay, mill status. Read codes. Which basically we've already done. We'll do stored codes. No code no codes are present. Pending codes and permanent codes. So let's take a look at permanent. No permanent codes are present, and I doubt there's going to be any pending. No pending codes, okay. Of course, if we had codes, we'd be able to erase it right here at this screen. Uh, let's take a look at our live data, see what it shows. And we'll just do all. And you got to remember, this is more, you know, this is just a code reader that offers, uh, you know, live data so that you can, you know, scroll down through and look at your live data if you need to. But it's more geared toward just a, a quick code reader to tell you what your code is. And there's, I mean, it's, it's got all the live data up and going. Hopefully that's coming through to you. Uh, graph data right there record and playback freeze frame vehicle info let's see what that gives probably turn the key on with the engine off engines running but it shouldn't shouldn't matter so there's VIN there's my VIN Cal ID well so it's got the uh, the engine module calibration uh, part numbers, which is the software that's in the uh, engine module. I am readiness. We'll go ahead and hit that. I am readiness. You want to know about that before you take your vehicle in to get it inspected. Uh, whenever you take a vehicle in to get a, a uh, ins inspection, in a lot of states you got to do a smog. Uh, they got to do an emissions test. First thing they do is they hook up, similar to this. Uh, they got a machine they hook up to your OBD2 port, and if they see any uh, IM readiness monitors not ready, depending on the state, depending on the vehicle year, if it's 2000 or older, at least here in Texas, you can have two readiness monitors not ready, and they'll still pass inspection. If it's a 2001 and newer, you can, you can only have one monitor not ready. Uh, before it'll pass so it's good to hook this up make sure it's all going to look good before you take it up there they hook up and then you see them walking into the lobby telling you sorry it's not going to pass because you got a readiness monitor that's not uh not ready so there's your mode six there's your o2 sensor test and component test uh, let's see what that has under it 
Okay, not supported. So I, I wouldn't think that there would be any kind of component test on there. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, looks like a you know a nice uh, scan tool or not a scan tool, but a code reader. Let's let's hook up or let's hit DTC just to see. So you got three buttons up here. You got DTC, VIN, and IM for IM readiness. So I just hit the VIN, and that's what that did. Let's go to or not VIN, but DTC. Uh, VIN doesn't really seem to have done anything. Let's go back. Okay, had to hit OK. So if you hit DTC, system normal. Okay, you hit OK. Now we're going to hit VIN. Gives you the VIN. Then we're going to hit IM uh, monitors, and then it gives you your IM monitors. So you got one central button right here that if you wanted to hook up and just look at the IM readiness status, you just hit one button and bam, you're there. So that's nice. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I think everybody ought to have an inexpensive little code reader in their glove box just so that you get a check engine light out on the road. You can plug in and see what it is. Not to mention a friend or a family. You know, I don't know how many times I've had a friend or a family, uh, you know, overheard them talking that they've got a check engine light and they, you know, don't know what it is. And I'm able to pull my little code reader out of my glove box and plug it in and uh, we're able to figure out, you know, if it's something serious or not. Anyway. That's about it. You guys take care.